Fans very much want to know what Coach Napier is going to do with DJ Lagway and Graham Mertz this upcoming weekend against Texas A&M. Today, Billy Napier spoke about that. Let's talk about it here on today's video presented by BetUS. So, if you miss Napier's press conference, he fielded several questions about Lagway and Mertz and who he was going to play and is there a quarterback controversy. He was somewhat coy about it, and obviously he didn't want to reveal too much, but he did say this. Well, I think our intention the entire time has been to play DJ in every game, right? And I think obviously – he gets a little bit more experienced each week, and certainly for him to have the opportunity to be the starter, prepare with the ones, and then go play. Um, and the way he did that, you know, the poise, the composure, I just think it shows that he's ready uh, to do what we intend to do with him going forward. So, um, you know, it's a blessing to have two really good quarterbacks, and certainly one with a, a ton of experience and one without. Uh, but there's no doubt. Uh, both these guys will make us harder to defend. Uh, we intend to use both of them. Now let's dive into this, but first let's give some love to BetUS. Right now on BetUS, if UF is a four and a half point dog to Texas A&M, you can bet that either way right now. And if you use the code YouTube150, you get a 150% deposit bonus up to $2,000 on your first first three deposits. I appreciate BetUS for the great deal and go check them out to wager on any and all college football games this season. Okay. So you heard what coach Napier said. He said his intention has been to play DJ in every game. I have some thoughts on that, right? He played him against Miami, but he played him in mop-up duty. It didn't appear like there was some you know, really well-designed package for him that they put in at just the right moment to kind of provide a change of pace. It felt like they played him when the game had gotten out of hand. So, you know, did they play him? Yes. So what he said is accurate. So far, DJ has played in every game. But I don't know that I felt like there was a whole lot of strategy into how they played him against Miami. He talked about how DJ is a dynamic player who can help the team. And obviously we all saw that on Saturday. This offense looked different with DJ Lagway at the helm. Wide receivers got more separation. He threw more long balls in one game than we threw in over half the season last year, a third of the season. I mean, insane numbers there. He, he set a freshman passing record. So yeah, dynamic player. His past coaching was brought up a little bit in this press conference, um, you know, and the experience that he has playing two quarterbacks. And in the past, he had a true freshman that he played um, and and along with an older guy. And Napier does really feel like that prepared that freshman quarterback well for the future. He talked about how both quarterbacks are different and how both can help the team. And honestly, I can see that, right? They both have a totally different skill set. I think it's very obvious that DJ Lagway has a much higher ceiling. I also feel like it's probably a fair statement to say that Graham Mertz has a higher floor, right? Graham Mertz has the experience. He doesn't make mistakes. He knows how to manage a game in tough environments. All of those things are positives for sure. I just think DJ is so dynamic. It's hard to keep him off the field. He is a generational talent and Graham Mertz is a game manager. He also talked about how DJ getting to have an entire week with the ones and start the game is going to help him moving forward. And I absolutely think that that is the case. You know, we saw we saw him hit a lot of targets that actually have been on the twos all summer long. And you can see the comfortability that he made with them practicing with the twos all summer. So now it's good that there is going to be a, a full week last week of him practicing with those ones and then playing a game with them as well. He makes them more comfortable with essentially pretty much anybody he could be targeting. And that is going to absolutely help him moving forward, whether he becomes the starter or there is just this package role that exists for him. But here's the big question for Napier and UF. Did DJ getting this opportunity and then proving himself on the field this weekend help increase the amount that we will see him? I think that is the biggest question, right? And I understand Coach Napier is not going to tell us, you know, 
oh, well, he's going to play these plays and Graham's going to play these plays. And this is how we're going to set it up. There's obviously some gamesmanship involved there. He doesn't need to reveal his entire coaching plan to us. But it is the question he's going to continually get asked until we see the answers on the field on Saturday. Napier mentioned that Mertz is still in concussion protocol, but he did seem pretty hopeful and optimistic about him being good to go. I believe he said he had one more box to check, I think. He will. He should have a practice, I believe, today that's non-contact. Check that box. And then he should be able to move on to contact from there. So if he's good to go soon, Napier's comments kind of sound a lot to me like Mertz is going to be the starter against Texas A&M on Saturday. And maybe that's not what you guys want to hear. And I get it. I think the fan base is just ready to turn things over. It was fun to watch Florida's offense. Even though I think there's massive room for improvement still, it was fun to watch an offense clicking. It was fun to see a ball thrown further than 20 yards. It was fun to see some of those acrobatic catches and just on the money dimes. But... I think the hope for UF fans would be, you know, moving forward, that Mertz has some sort of short leash. He earned this starting job over the summer. He is one of the vocal leaders of this team. I understand Napier going where he's comfortable, but I hope that if he is not putting points on the board, if the offense is not moving, that they go ahead and make the move to Lagway, maybe sooner than they would have had we not gotten to see what Lagway was capable of last week. And then the other thing I think UF fans would be hoping for is that whatever amount of time that Lagway was going to have, that he's going to play a lot more than he would have prior to everybody seeing what he could do last Saturday. He is a dynamic player. It is going to be hard to keep him off the field. I think his teammates love him and want to play with him. I think he is an incredible weapon and he just elevates that offense. I just, to put it simply, I think Texas A&M is far more concerned about playing DJ Lagway than they are about playing Graham Mertz. I mentioned this earlier, but Napier was asked about whether or not the plan was originally to play Lagway more against Miami instead of just mop up duty. And he sort of sidestepped the question. And that's a little bit of a concern for me. It was an excellent question by, I think, uh, Nick Delatora over at On3. And it didn't seem like the plan was to bring Lagway in at all. Now, Maybe we were just shell-shocked by the game and there was no reason to put Lagway in there in a game where you have no clue what's happening. But if there was ever a time to try something new, was it not during that one? And I'm not talking about for mop-up duty. I'm talking about before the game was at hand. Didn't you have an opportunity to see if you could get something going? And he didn't take it. I'd imagine things go differently this week, though. If UF gets down... And they're going to be looking for that spark. I'm, I don't know. You go with him, right? I'm not sure if it's wise to put a freshman out there down, you know, 14 points. But if it's a close game and you need just that little bit of energy, that little bit of spark to kind of get you over that hump, you've got to think you go for it, right? I don't know. I don't get paid millions of dollars to figure those things out. That's, you know, the coach's job. But I feel I feel like I'd be pretty surprised at this point if Graham Mertz didn't start, and that is not going to be something that makes this fan base very happy. Napier is in a tough spot, no doubt. The problem is that I'm not sure this is a quarterback-only problem right now, but he would probably be smart to do what is going to gain the most support and the most optimism for the future by playing DJ Lagway. Uh, You know, I just, I don't envy the spot that Coach Napier is in. If Graham Mertz really did earn the starting job over the summer, then I understand the tendency to ride with the guy that earned the job. I think after watching Saturday, and again, I know it was Samford. It is not the same as strapping up against Miami or Texas A&M or pretty much anybody else that's coming down this gauntlet of a schedule. But the offense still looked different than it had, which, you know, then makes you wonder what were they evaluating this summer? Maybe Mertz 
is an incredible practice guy. Maybe DJ Lagway has had some growing pains during practice, which would be totally normal for a freshman. But it's hard to see the two different products and feel like Graham Mertz had to have won this job over the summer, you know? And if he were to make the move to Lagway this week, though, I think it would send the signal that over nine months, he didn't do a great job evaluating who should be playing. So that's a whole other host of problems. I don't envy where Napier is right now. It's kind of a lose-lose. The fan base is probably not going to be happy no matter what you go with. And that's a hard position to be in. But you know what cures all of that? Winning. So we're going to see how the week progresses. I'm expecting further updates and clarity as the week goes on, but would still be pretty surprised if it wasn't Mertz on the first UF drive of the game. Let me know your thoughts. I appreciate BetUS for their support during today's video, and I appreciate all of you guys for tuning in. Go Gators!